once again, this is a Common Constitutionalist coming at you with the weekly Common Constitutionalist podcast. And I'm going to be talking about one topic again. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of liking this one topic thing so because I, I get a chance to drone on and, and go into a little more detail than I normally would if I'm doing two or three topics within, say, a 20, 20 to 30 minute period. So I'm just going to talk about one topic, and that's this tweet war between the Freedom Caucus, Trump, Trump people, whatever, over Ryan Care, or whatever we want to call that this week. So we'll discuss that and uh, all the uh, the machinations of it today on the Common Constitutionalist. You are listening to the Common Constitutionalist, broadcasting from an undisclosed location, free from the prying eyes of establishment black helicopters. Alrighty then. So anyway, so this uh, this this tweet war, the thing between the establishment, the Freedom Caucus, or, or whoever, the Constitutionalists, however you want to call them, now, the Freedom Caucus is a little sophomoric, but whatever. If that's what they want to call themselves, far be it from me to question them, I suppose. But this whole business about Ryan Care, it goes down in flames and whatever. My question, I guess, is. What exactly do we want? I mean, do we just want to win? Is that is that all it is? I mean, it's remember Charlie Sheen in his uh, years ago, a few well, I don't know how many years ago at this point, when he was a complete waste product, um, and he was married to some porn star. I don't know, still might be for all I know. I don't follow Charlie Sheen or Hollywood or any of that garbage. But at any rate, he coined this fr- <laughs> this frame, boom, winning. Every time I hear about that we want to win, this is this is who I think of and what I think of is boom winning. Is winning just for the sake of winning. Now, that's not what it's supposed to be about, folks. Like me, love me, hate me, I don't care, curse me up and down, I don't give a rat's blank. Um this is not we're not in the business. The Republicans we didn't we didn't put them there just to win for the sake of winning. Okay, we're supposed they're supposed to win for the sake of the constitution and for the sake of us, the taxpayers, the citizens. That's what we're supposed to be that's who, that's who we elected these people to go win for. Win one for the gipper. We're the freaking gippers, all right? But that's what this feels like is that it feels like they the Republicans wanted a win for the sake of winning and Trump somehow got on board and wanted to win for the sake of winning because he likes winning. I don't know what the deal is. I can't get inside the guy's head. I don't presume to know what Trump is thinking. I do presume to know what the establishment Republicans are thinking because they've got a freaking track record a mile long. And frankly, with those guys, they wouldn't they wouldn't even know what to do with a win if they achieved one. So, I mean, they're they're just they're they're happy as far as I'm concerned. Being the minority party, the whining party, and the uh, the losing party, that seems to me what the establishment seems to do best, and is as demonstrated by the sixty plus times that they passed to repeal Obamacare bills when they knew it was safe to do so, when they knew they weren't going to be boom winning. Okay, they could win with us. Um, but somehow they fooled us again, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me a 50,000 freaking times, shame on me for voting for you, a bunch of bums. So everybody knows, not everybody, let me back up a little bit, constitutional conservatives, the Freedom Caucus guys, we all knew that Ryan Care Bill was a crap a sandwich, okay, it was a crap sandwich, we all knew this thing, and I don't understand why Trump got behind this thing. I don't, I, whatever, I'll just hold my tongue on that because I don't know why. But then it was, uh, okay, Ryan cares over. We lost on that one. Let's move on to tax reform. And then Trump, I, I don't know why he can't help himself. I don't know what the heck the deal is with him. But he goes ahead and some tweets after the fact. Donald J. Trump at real Donald Trump tweets. The Freedom Caucus will hurt the entire Republican agenda if they don't get on the team and fast. We must fight them and Dems in 2018. 
Now, how freaking constructive is that? Not really. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but that was ill-conceived and uncalled for, in my opinion. And obviously, I'm only speaking for myself, but so be it. Now, also speaking for myself, I don't give a rat's A about a Republican agenda. I don't give a rat's A about a team, okay? I only care about rolling back government and regaining our rights and our freedoms. That's all that counts, and that's what we put you freaking guys in there for. We didn't freaking uh, we didn't put you guys in there to boom winning some crap sandwich that we know is just Obamacare, um, you know, with some you know with a with a nice um, buttered bun and some Russian dressing on it. Ha! Yeah, see what I did there? Russian dressing, you know, Russian. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anywho's, uh, so I, I I decided to real quick. Uh, maybe I was wrong about this. You know about the. Uh, Republican agenda and getting on the team and whatnot. So I went back to the Constitution and I looked at the, you know, I looked at the oath of office, actually the presidential oath of office and the oath of office of Congress and the Senate. And I'm still trying to uh, to find <clears throat> a clause or something in a parenthetically maybe in the oath of office that, that says that I will protect, I will defend and protect the Republican agenda or the team. Well, no, it's it's defend and protect the Constitution, okay? That's what they're there for. And anything less is a fail, is a boom not winning, all right? The Constitution isn't partisan. It, ain't, it has no team. It is the ultimate nonpartisan document, and it supersedes all teams and all parties, or at least it's supposed to. But, hey, isn't that, that might be a little wonkish for some. So I just, sorry, but I just don't get that. But then the Freedom Caucus does something, in my opinion, that was also stupid. They decide to tweet back. So Justin, Ab uh, Justin Amash is a representative from Michigan, and he's part of the Freedom Caucus, and he tweeted back. First, he retweeted the uh, Donald J. Trump, the Freedom Caucus will hurt the entire Republican agenda, get on the team, yay team, uh, whatever. Um, and he tweeted, it didn't take long for the swamp to drain at real Donald Trump. That was funny, but it was uncalled for. No shame, Mr. President. Almost everyone succumbs to the D.C. establishment. Well, he ain't wrong there. That's for darn sure. No doubt it is hard to, hard to dispute those facts that most everybody succumbs to the D.C. establishment. But it was completely and utterly uncalled for for Amash to go on the attack like this. He could have taken the high road. He should have taken the high road and just said, look, he's welcome to his opinion. I disagree. We at the Freedom Caucus disagree. We didn't like the bill. We didn't like the Orion Care bill. It's the only reason why we voted against it. We don't have any animus toward anybody personally, certainly not the president. But we just we voted our consciences. Uh, because that's what people sent us up here to do. We voted for the Constitution and not for the team. Sorry, but that's the way it is. But uh, as far as Mr. Trump's tweet, he's welcome to his opinion. And he should have just left it at that instead of this freaking crap. So then enter Dan Scavino. Actually, you know what? Why don't we take a real quick break from my dronings and I'll be right to back. You're listening to me, the Common Constitutionalist. Yeah, baby! Yeah. All right, welcome back. So, enter stage right, Dan Scavino. Uh, he's the White House Director of Social Media and a senior aide to Trump. A director of social media. What's next? Let's have a White House Director of virtual reality or artificial intelligence or some other freaking thing egad man okay so he's the white house director of social media so what well cbs reported that mr scavino called for michigan rep uh, republican representative justice justin amash a member of the conservative house freedom caucus an outspoken critic of the president no he's not he's not an out he's an outspoken critic of ryan care to be challenged and defeated in 2018 in the 2018 congressional primary. Dan Scavino Jr. tweeted, 
at Dan Scavino, that at real Donald Trump. I thought, this is such crap. I can't even stand it, man. Okay, anyway, I, I don't tweet if you, uh, if you didn't get that message. You do now. It's ridiculous. At any rate, so Dan Scavino tweeted, at real Donald Trump, is bringing back is bringing auto plants and jobs back to Michigan at Justin Amash is a big liability um hashtag Trump train defeat <laughs> choo choo Trump train defeat him in primary I mean really so first off what does one have to do with the other what do jobs in Michigan and auto plants coming back to Michigan, which bully for Trump if he's getting it done, terrific. I'm glad he's doing it. But what does one have to do with the other? What do jobs and health insurance, yeah, I mean, like putting aside that kind of nonsense, but what does one topic, the fact that the uh, Freedom Caucus didn't vote for the Ryan Care, a crap, a sandwich, have to do with bringing jobs back to Michigan? Defeat him in the primary. This is a load of crapola, I'll tell you what, and it is utterly and completely, shall we say, unhelpful. So President Trump wants them on the team and but fast. Okay, that's terrific. Great. Um, how about start treating them like team members and not like your employees? Because they're not your doggone employees. They're, if you want to call them team members, they're part of the Republican team, so to speak. Um, but they're independent uh, contractors, for want of a better term. They're not part of the team, necessarily, other than Team America. And attacking Justin Amash, now granted, Amash, he didn't start this thing, but he shouldn't have gotten involved. But attacking him, he's a guy with a 96 Liberty score at Conservative Review. When it comes to votes, actual votes and getting things done you know we like to get things done in washington right let's get things done let's make some progress because we're all greek and progressives yeah right a guy with a 96 liberty score and you're attacking this dude he's uh he's more conservative than almost every other member of the house and senate in congress um and you're attacking him smart move unless of course Someone in the administration or in the establishment, well, the establishment, wants to completely quash and get rid of all conservative um, upstarts, shall we say, in the Republican Party. It wants to just uh, wash them all away. And that's entirely possible. You know darn well the establishment wants that. But then Amash couldn't let it be. Let it be. So anyway, um... He uh he tweets back Trump administration and establishment have merged into hashtag Trump establishment. <laughs> Come on, man. Same old agenda, attack conservatives, libertarian and libertarians and independent thicker. Think independent thickers. Thicker than what? I don't know. Uh independent thinkers. There we go. And uh again, this is I mean, I what is this dude thinking? I have no idea. Trump's the king of the tweet, brother. Uh, you ain't going to beat him in a tweet war. Sorry, it's just the way it is. Like it, love it, hate it, I don't care. You ain't going to beat him in a tweet war, brother. He's the king of the tweets. So I don't understand why Amash is getting involved in this thing other than he is. he feels personally slighted. He feels personally hurt or offended or something. I, I don't know. But he shouldn't ever have even uh, picked up this baton, so to speak. So he just should have shut up and deflected it like Reagan did. Well, there you go. That type of nonsense. Um, just say that they're welcome to their opinion or something and just let it go. But then Amash was uh, quoted, he was walking down the boulevard. And he was, quote, I guess there was an MSNBC reporter stuck a, uh, a, a microphone in his face, as well as many other microphones. And he basically called the Trump team uh, like, a, like a bunch of fifth grade bullies. And that was uh, that was pretty dopey. I'm sorry, dude, but that was pretty dopey. You need to take a course on thinking on your feet, brother, because that wasn't it. But so I don't I don't know where this thing's going to go. I, I don't I don't know. Um, but I'm going to guess at this juncture, 
that uh, Amash is going to come back. Uh, he ain't going to look very good in this. Um, and he may very well get primaried, and he may very well lose. And that's fine, because I don't think he's, he, he doesn't want to be beholden to anybody, certainly not the team, uh, just for the sake of boom winning. And so, but, but from Trump's standpoint, I, I get it to a certain extent, the transition going from CEO to president. Okay, technically, I guess you're the CEO of the United States of America, sure, but you're not really a CEO. Okay, you control the executive branch, but you sure the uh, legislative branch and the judicial branch are not your employees. But he is used to getting his way as CEO, and that's perfectly understandable. I get it. Coming from he's been in business his entire life. And he tells people to get things done, and they get it done, or else, or else, you know what else? You're fired, and that's the way, and that's the way it's always been for Trump. And so the transition into that he can't just do this because he wants to do this has got to be frustrating as heck for him, and I understand that. But for a president, there is no or else, or at least not immediately. Okay, sure, you can campaign against your the people in your own party, and that is non-constructive, other than the establishment hacks, which we'd all like to get rid of. Well, at least like minds would like to get rid of. But he also, I think he has a persona, a public persona, uh, Trump does, uh, that he plays a hothead on TV, so to speak, that he's not really, I don't think he's really a hothead, but he plays one because it plays well with the peoples, okay? And they uh, and his supporters love that for it. They love him for it. And here I am droning on again for freaking who knows how long. Let's take another quick break. Let me take my breath, and I'll be right to back. You're listening to the common constitution. Let the truth be known. Be known. Be known. All right. Welcome back to all you in uh, internet land, so to speak. And uh, like I said, um. Trump has, he's got this uh, persona, at least, that he's a hothead. That he's, uh, and I think, again, he's playing that he's a hothead because it plays well to his base or to his supporter. His supporters are tired of the political speak. Everybody's tired of the political speak. Um, that that y- y- you hear this kind of crap all the time, particularly on the Senate floor, the House chambers or whatnot where somebody wants to interrupt somebody else and they claim that it's the, uh, you know, I'd like to interrupt the uh, the honorable or throw it over to the honorable this or the uh, the distinguished whoever, whatever. It's such crap, Ola. I mean, these people, Pelosi, Reed, who's no longer there, Schumer, Charlie Rangel was there, uh, Turbin Durbin was there, Sheila Jackson Lee. Hank Johnson, you know, Hank Johnson's the the guy that said uh, who was uh, I think he was uh, he was they, they had a hearing or something like that. And he was a Marine, <laughs> Marine Corps general a couple of years ago or whatever. And Hank Johnson was <laughs> sitting up there in his big, uh, you know, the, the big desks that are that are suspended 50 feet above the uh, the people that they're speaking to. Like they're a bunch of freaking gods or the people, on, you know, gods on Mount Olympus or some nonsense. And he was the one who said that there were so many people on Guam that he was afraid that the island might tip over or something. <laughs> I mean, and he's honorable and he's the distinguished member. People hate that crap. They just want people to speak plain English. And that's what Trump's all about. He speaks plain English. He's angry at stuff and that people love him for this kind of crap. And so maybe that's why he's doing it. I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not sure why, but I suspect that that's probably, at least somewhat, why he does what he does, is because the, his base loves it. They 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 love the get him attitude. I I get that. I 100% get that, because we have been the doormats for for American politics for so long, and we are tired of boom losing. So we we just want to boom winning for a while, and for whatever reason, on whatever matter or subject, it doesn't matter. We just want to win because winning's good. Makes you feel good to win, right? 
I also don't know what exactly happened. After Ryan Care went down in flames, uh, Trump had a meeting. He got a standing ovation from the Freedom Caucus in this big meeting that he had. And he came out and he said that he didn't blame the Freedom Caucus for voting this thing, for voting Ryan Care down, that they were friends of his. And he said this on air, he said it at a seating at a, uh, sitting at a table or a desk or whatever. And that's what he said. He didn't blame these people. Uh, he can't blame them. They're friends of his. And then what happened? I, I don't I don't know. Somebody, in my opinion, has his ear. I don't know who has his ear, but somebody's got his ear and and advised him to go after these people. I don't know who. Uh, I don't know whether it's Priebus or Bannon or somebody. I don't know. I know Priebus. I see. I don't know Bannon from Adam. OK, I've heard stories about him. I don't know. And nor does really anyone else. But Priebus, on the other hand, he is a well-known establishment hack. He's a hack a from way back, okay? He is in tight with the establishment, and maybe he's the one that's got the ear of Trump saying that you got to go get these guys. you got to go get these Freedom Caucus guys. They're, uh, they're not part of the team. They need to get on the team. And they just keep repeating this to Trump until he says, okay, fine. And then he's sitting there at, at, you know, at night uh, by himself, and he just tweets because maybe that's the last thing he, I don't know I don't know it doesn't seem like he would he would be swayed by this type of opinion but something is happening because he came out and said that these, he doesn't blame these guys they're friends of his and then boom all of a sudden flips 180 degrees and now they're the enemy I, I don't know people don't normally change on a dime like that unless there's some sort of outside force nudging them to do so so I'm not sure how this thing's going to play out. I think it was ill-advised for Trump to tweet that. It was ill-advised for Dan Scavino to get involved, and it was certainly ill-advised for uh, Justin Amash to take the bait, so to speak, to grab the hook, take the bait, and get you know, and and may end up swinging for it because of it. I don't know, but this was a stupid move on Justin Amash's part, and he should have just deflected it and just said, look. You people are welcome to your opinion. I disagree. We voted for this bill on, on principle and because what was in the bill, we didn't like what was in the bill. It's not the way it was presented by Ryan. We could have put a clean repeal, a repeal bill up. The ones that we passed a gazillion times before, the one that was passed in 2015 or 2016 by a huge margin, and it was a great repeal bill. But no, of course, Ryan had to put up this crap sandwich and uh, Trump got behind it. Why? I just, uh, Like I said, I, I don't know. We may never know. So that's about all I've got. Uh, this is the Common Constitutionalist signing off for yet another week uh, in the frozen freaking tundra of New England where apparently it's going to it's going to snow until August, I guess. And we're all going to be we're going to die from hypothermia up here. Some freaking thing. Uh, it says spring on the calendar. It says April, but it ain't. It might as well be January up here. So that's enough whining for me. This is the Common Constitutionalist signing off. Y'all have a great balance of the weekend, and I am out. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Common Constitutionalist Weekly Podcast. 